Another uh, important topic is uh, the claim by the Brexit side that uh, once you leave the EU, you can make your own trade deals. And they're right with that. Uh, so at the moment, you cannot uh, make your own uh, free trade deals with other countries because this is done centrally by the EU on behalf of all its member states. So the EU always is negotiating as a bloc uh, when it is about uh, trade. Now, of course, um, you, uh, I think the Brexit side is right that you could make trade deals. The question is, and that the much more important question, could you make good trade deals? Because sometimes a bad deal is worse than no deal. Now, uh, Switzerland, uh, which is outside the EU and has kept its, uh, is in the single market, but had, has kept its right to make its own trade deals, has actually managed to make a free trade deal with China. And that is often mentioned uh, uh, by the Brexit side as an example uh, for how uh, good it is to be uh, outside the EU uh, because it allows, obviously, in the, uh, like in the case of Switzerland, to make your own trade deals. Now, I mean, I'm Swiss and I can tell you I'm not overly happy about this deal because if you have a look at it, it reads almost like a, 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 a treaty of surrender. I mean, it's like a, it's a Chinese deal. It's I win and you lose. Uh, Switzerland opens its market for Chinese products immediately from day one. Tariffs go down. The other way around, that's not the case. The other way around, uh, the Chinese will eventually lower their tariffs in maybe 10, maybe 15 years, depending on the product category. And uh, as you know, the, maybe uh, the Chinese government is not that respectful of contracts all the time, especially with smaller countries. So it could well be that then uh, when we then come to this point in 15 years, the Chinese say, oh yeah, no, you know, we have some problems with implementation. Give us a few more years. So, uh, I mean, yeah, you can make deals like that <laughs> I mean I could make deals like that but uh, it's not, it doesn't mean that this is going to help you economically because this deal doesn't help Switzerland economically really that much uh, I mean the, the only thing it does is lowering prices for Chinese imports uh, to Swiss consumers but Switzerland could also as well have just lowered its VAT rate uh, to, to help the Swiss consumer pay less uh, uh, money for their products. Uh, so, uh, will you make good deals outside the EU? Very questionable. Uh, and of course, the EU has a much bigger clout than a single country because it's, it represents 500 million consumers. So usually when uh, countries uh, uh, make a deal with the EU, they are much more forthcoming. They are much more willing to, uh, to agree and make concessions uh, so that uh, European companies can profit. Uh, and that's also why these deals take longer. Uh, I mean, the deal between uh, the United States and the European Union take so long because for the first time ever the United States is confronted with a partner that is equally big or actually even bigger because the European Union is the largest uh, trading bloc in the world. So uh, they are normally used to also just send a fax and then get it signed uh, by the, the negotiating party, but of course that doesn't work with a European Union who feels equally entitled to get a good deal. And if you have the choice between getting a really good deal 
uh, after 10 years and you know a very one-sided deal after five years personally I would rather have the good deal after 10 years another interesting uh, point uh, that I observe is that the Brexit side when it comes to negotiations is always extremely pessimistic about what we can uh, reach when it's about negotiating with our European partners inside the EU. They say, oh, Britain gets always outvoted, cannot uh, get anything done inside the EU. Uh, you know, uh, they just never do what we want. Yet, when, it get, when it's about negotiating with non-European countries, they become complete optimists that the very same politicians and diplomats suddenly turn into super negotiators who get all these amazing free trade deals. And that is interesting because, I mean, out of personal experience, I can tell you that uh, a negotiation with, with Germans or, or French, I mean, it's like a, it's like a pleasant stroll in Hyde Park. Uh, compared to uh, the Iron Man marathon <laughs> that is a negotiation with with Chinese or Indians uh, it's much harder uh, and I don't know where the brexit side is taking this totally different uh, perception of our negotiation strength and why they are so much more optimistic uh, with about non-European countries I mean I guess they expect some sort of special sympathy from countries like China and India uh, I don't know maybe for the UK's uh, past uh, colonial rule and gunboat diplomacy I don't know but I just wish them good luck with that